Good morning and welcome to Newcastle Baptist Church's online morning service. Wherever you are, thank you for joining us today. We give you a very warm welcome. Our prayer times this week are on Zoom at 7.30 on Wednesday and 11 o'clock on Friday morning and Zoom details will be provided prior to these meetings. On Thursday this week, the men begin a series of studies based on the disciplines of a godly man by R. Kent Hughes. These will be on Zoom too and begin at 7.30 on Thursday evening and all men are very welcome to that. And elders and deacons have their monthly meeting next Tuesday at 7.30, also on Zoom. So let's read the scriptures this morning and then we'll pray together. I want to read some verses from Colossians chapter 1. Listen to these words. I break in at verse 11. And Paul writes, Joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints, in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Let's pray together. We come to you, our Heavenly Father, this morning, thankful for your great love for us. We thank you that you have qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. And thank you for rescuing us from the kingdom of darkness and bringing us into that great eternal kingdom that will never pass away. We thank you for the great price that was paid at Calvary's cross so that we might have forgiveness and come into a great relationship with you. Thank you for amazing grace that has rescued us from darkness and brought us into marvelous light. Today we acknowledge our sinfulness before you our words, our thoughts, our deeds that have displeased you. But thank you that with you there is forgiveness. And thank you that through our Lord Jesus there is cleansing from every sin. And today we want to pray about the situation in our country. We pray especially for those on the front line, those who work in the NHS, those who work in care homes and other places too. We pray for doctors and nurses, and others who are facing unprecedented pressure, physical pressure, mental, emotional pressure. And we pray for those who are ill, those who have been bereaved. And we remember especially this morning the family of the Reverend Adrian Adger. We pray for Karen, his wife, and family circle, and comfort for them and the congregation of Clough and Seaford Presbyterian churches in these days. We pray too for those who feel lonely in this period of lockdown, for those who are anxious, concerned, struggling to cope with it all. We pray for those facing financial pressures and business concerns, and for our schools, teachers, and ancillary staff, parents, and pupils too. We remember our local leaders, our national leaders, those who take decisions and carry immense loads in the current situation. We thank you for the vaccines that have come on stream and ask that they might be rolled out quickly and have great impact on the current situation that is so difficult. We pray too for the situation with Damir in Croatia and Kachevik in the aftermath of the earthquake there and ask for your help for him and the believers in that place. And so, Lord, we commend all these things to you. We rejoice that you're on the throne in control of it all and so thankful that we can cast our care upon you, for you care for us. Now we're going to listen to a, a lovely song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, All Our Sins and Griefs to Bear. And that'll be followed by a spot for the boys and girls today.
Good morning, boys and girls. It's great to see you today. Hope you've had a good week. I want to talk to you today about this here. Do you know what that is? That's right. It's a decoration from a Christmas tree. And we had this on our Christmas tree this year. Maybe you've had one like it on your Christmas tree as well. It's a snowflake. And I know many of you were hoping for a white Christmas with lots of these around the place. But we didn't get one this year. But over these past number of days, as you've looked at the top of the morns, there have been plenty of times when there's been snow on the top of the mountains. And maybe over the Christmas period, you've, you've had some of these uh, Christmas cards with Christmas scenes on them with snow. Here's a house with snow on the roof and snow on the Christmas trees and snow on the ground as well. And we had lots of cars like that this year. But as I thought about snow, I thought about a verse from the Bible that talks about snow. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And there's a great contrast there in that verse. The contrast is between scarlet, and there's some scarlet thread, and white as snow. There's some pretend snow. There's another contrast in this verse, and it says, though your sins are red as crimson, here's some crimson thread, they shall be like wool, and there's some wool. These words were written by Isaiah many years ago to people who were sinful people, people who had turned their backs on God, were doing their own thing and, and going their own way. They were bringing offerings to God, but they were going through the motions. And God says he's tired of them, he's weary of them. And even though they pray, he'll not listen because sin separates from God. And sin always does that. Sin is that important. It separates you from God here and now. And one day we'll separate people from God in the next life as well. But there is good news for these people. That though they're sinful people. And by the way, sin really means the things that we think that displease God. The things that we say that displease God. And the things that we do that displease God. And I have plenty of those in my life and I'm sure you have as well. But you know, the lovely thing is, there is forgiveness with God. The lovely thing is that Jesus loved you and me so much that he died on the cross to pay for our sins, to take the punishment that we deserve so that we might not face that punishment or have to pay for our sins, but rather that we might become God's friends and one day be with him in heaven for all eternity. You see, to be forgiven is that important. And I wonder today, are you forgiven? Have you a clean heart? That's what Isaiah encouraged these people to think about. Think about their hearts. And to have clean hearts is so important. So boys and girls, this morning then, as we think about the snow, I wonder what your heart is like. I wonder, is it like this thread? That is like scarlet. Because there's sin there. Or like crimson. Because there's sin there. Or has there been that time in your life where Jesus has come and he's forgiven you and your heart has become like this, as white as snow? Or like this, as wool? It's lovely when that happens to a boy or a girl or a teenager or an older person. And I wonder has it happened to you yet? The lovely thing is today, that though your sins are like scarlet, they can be as white as snow. Though your sins are red as crimson, they can be like wool. Think about your heart. Is it as white as snow? Our reading today is Psalm 55. For the director of music was stringed instruments, a masculine of David. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me 
and I'm distraught. At the voice of the enemy at the stairs of the wicked, for they bring down suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, Oh, that I had the wings of a dove, I would fly, fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Confuse the wicked, O Lord, confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its walls, malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city, uh, threats and lies never leave its streets. If, the, if an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship as we walked with the throng at the house of God. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the grave, for evil finds lodging among them. But I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He ransoms me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned forever, will hear them and afflict them, Selah. Men who never change their ways and have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His speech, his speech is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. But you, O God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of corruption. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men will not live out half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. The theme for this morning is burdens. This psalm is directed to the director of music with stringed instruments, a mascal of David. That's a, a literary or musical term. And the book of Psalms is a great book to read because there are psalms that express so many experiences of life, from failure, broken relationships, deliverance, great hope, forgiveness, psalms that's, that focus on the majesty and greatness of God, God the shepherd, the one who is our refuge and strength, so many great themes in the book of Psalms. But this is a psalm that takes up this whole idea of cares and burdens and how we cope and manage those in our lives. Probably many of you have been watching the news this past week, and the news has highlighted the amazing job the NHS staff is doing in this present pandemic, but also highlighting the immense pressure, the, the, the immense loads that the NHS staff carry as they seek to look after very ill people in these days. And this psalm takes up that whole idea of pressure, of handling pressure, of handling care, uh, things that, that cause you anxiety, things that in the middle of the night come to your mind and go over and over in your mind. There are four things from the psalm that we want to look at this morning. First of all, the cares David carries. There are two of them. Two main cares. Here's burden number one. We use that word if, if we may. We don't know the circumstances of this psalm. It may have been to do with Absalom and Absalom's conspiracy against David. Um, but we do know the two things that were causing him concern at this particular time. The first was the enemy that David was facing. What troubled him was the words that they said and the looks that they gave. Verse 3 talks about the voice of the enemy. Uh, and verse 3 talks about the stares of the wicked. They were reviling him. They were speaking ill of him and bringing suffering to him. And in verse 2, it's very interesting, he says his thoughts trouble him. And in verse 4, his heart is in anguish. You can imagine David, can't you, waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning and these thoughts going round and round in his mind, 
troubling him. That was one of the, the, the burdens that he had from this enemy. The thoughts were impacted by it. But not only the thoughts were impacted, but the heart was impacted as well. Here David says he's in anguish of heart. What was happening was impacting his heart. His heart was in knots, I can put it like that. Not just the mind, but the heart as well. Death threatened. Fear and terror came upon him. And they impacted his mind and his heart. But there's more than that, because not only does the enemy cause David to have this great burden, but the second burden that David carries is found in verses 12 to 14 and 20 to 21. Here it's not the enemy, but here it's now, believe it or not, David's friend, a close personal friend, a companion, and trouble comes from this quarter. This is someone whom David enjoyed close fellowship. Together they went to the house of God with the crowd. But now things are different. Now his friend attacks his friends. And there are two main issues. The first one is relationships that have been broken. And the second thing is words that have been said. Listen to what David says about his friend's words. He says they are, uh, his speech is as smooth as butter. But underneath, there is war. In other words, on the outside, you heard words. But really, what was going on in his companion's heart was very different. David goes on to say uh, his speech was like oil. But underneath, there were words that were being said that were doing enormous damage words that were so plausible and were wounding, listen to this phrase, like drawn swords. Here were words that were really damaging and causing problems, words that were hurting, like swords going into your heart. So here is David thinking about this companion and seeing one thing in the outside, but really underneath there was something else going on and it was hurting David. I wonder this morning as you think about these burdens that David carried, the burden of the enemy that was attacking and the burden of his close friend. I wonder as you think about that, I wonder what burdens you're carrying today. Maybe it's to do with your family, maybe to do with your friends. Maybe like David, a relationship that once was great, but now it's been blown asunder because of words that have done immense damage. Maybe for you today, it's the burden of employment. Maybe coronavirus has impacted you in that respect. Maybe it's brought illness. Maybe it's brought bereavement. Maybe brought personal issues to you. And it's a burden you're carrying. It's a weight you're carrying and can be so difficult. I remember one year, uh, it was coming up to New Year, and on New Year's Eve, I decided that I would go and bring some wood back for the coal fire that we had in our farmhouse. I just got a, uh, one of the hedges cut. And so I went to the edge of one of the fields and uh, sawed up one of the tree trunks, threw it on the shoulder, carried this fairly weighty tree trunk back and thought, I'll do it again. So I went back, got another tree trunk, threw it on the other shoulder, back to the farmhouse again. And that was all right until about four o'clock in the morning when I tried to get out of bed and could hardly move because I'd racked my back carrying those tree trunks. And as I thought about those burdens, those tree trunks I was carrying, it's true that many today carry burdens just like that, great weights. And what does the Psalm say about that? Well, such are the weights that David, David carries that he wants to go far away and leave them behind. So if the first thing are the cares that David carries, the second thing is the rest David longs for in this psalm. Verses 6 to 8 focus on the longing of David heart, David's heart just to get away from it all. What did you ever think that, feel like that? You just wish you could leave it all behind and, and go away. Here, death is threatening. 
Here, fear is overtaking David. Here, horror is overwhelming him. Do you notice that little word in verse 6? It says, oh, oh, for the wings of a dove. That uh, underlines the intensity of feeling that David just wants to be away from it and to fly away, just like a dove would fly away and to be at rest. Maybe you know that Mendelssohn's great music, Hear My Prayer, based on this particular psalm. And uh, the, the latter part of that takes up the words, oh, for the wings of a dove. And the psalm says, oh, that I could just be, be like a dove uh, and have wings uh, and just get away from all that's going on, from the troubled mind, from the anguished heart, from the, the death that threatens, from the fear that over, overtaking, from the horror that's overwhelming. And instead of all of that, oh, that I could be at rest and just away from it all and leave it behind just like going to a desert island. So the cares that David carries, the rest David longs for, and thirdly, the casting David does. What does he do with these burdens that he has? Well, uh, the psalm in verse 22 says, he casts his cares upon the Lord. Casts his burden, another version says, upon the Lord. You see, David has learned the power of prayer. He has got into his mind and into, into, into his heart what it is to pray. And he says in verse 1, Listen to my prayer, O God. Don't ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. And he brings his burden to the Lord. And, and it says in verse, verse 17, He calls out to God evening and morning and noon, three times in a day. He brings these things to God and he casts them upon the Lord. The word that is used there for casting really means to hurl or to throw upon. And it reminds me of the equivalent verses in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5 and verse 7 where it says, Cast your cares upon the Lord for He cares for you. It's a lovely verse. It's the equivalent verse of this verse 22 in Psalm 55. And in 1 Peter 5 and verse 7, the word that's used for cast is a a similar word to this. It's got the the same idea of hurling, of throwing upon. Indeed, the the word that's used in 1 Peter 5, 7 is also used, do you remember when Jesus was going into Jerusalem and there was the donkey there uh, and people around were were casting their, their cloaks, throwing their cloaks on the donkey. And it's that idea of throwing upon, of hurling, of giving over to. We're good at casting all kinds of things, but I wonder, do we cast our burdens upon the Lord? A man was driving a truck in Nairobi one day when he came across an elderly lady carrying uh, a bundle of firewood on her head. Uh, I'm sure you can picture the scene. It looked heavy, and she was tired, so the man stopped the truck and offered her a lift. She got on board, and off they set. And the driver looked in the mirror only to discover that the woman was sitting in the back of the truck with a pile of firewood still on her head. She didn't even take it, take it off her head and, and leave it on the truck. She could have done that. But aren't we often like that? I wonder how we, how we really got the hold of the power of prayer and of the, the great God that we can come to and bring our burdens to, not carry them ourselves, but bring them to Him. The song we've listened to this morning says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So the cares David carries, the rest David longs for, and the casting David does. And then finally this morning, the God David trusts. What does he do with his cares? He casts them upon the Lord. The word that's used here for for Lord is the word Yahweh, Jehovah, the great God of heaven. Verse 50, uh, Psalm 55, verse, verse 19 speaks of a God who is enthroned forever. And don't we need to get a hold of that picture again and again in these coronavirus days that, that we have a God who is in control of it all, a God who is on the throne, He's the ultimate authority. 
and we can bring our burdens to him. There is no higher throne. There is no higher power. When you look around the world at all the thrones and the powers that there are, there is a higher throne, says one of the great songs we sing. There is a higher power, the one who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who reigns and the one who will reign forever and ever. The little boy was in the, an airplane one day and there was a lot of turbulence and the air steward came down and said, are you, are you not afraid? And he said to her, he said, why should I be afraid? My father is at the controls. And it's lovely to get a hold of the truth, isn't it? That we have a heavenly father. Our God is in control of it all. This name, Yahweh, reminds us of a God who is faithful. This name, Jehovah, reminds us that he keeps his promises. And when you cast your burdens upon him, he promises to do what? There are two lovely promises here. Get a hold of them for they're, they're, they're so lovely. The first thing is, it says he will sustain you. The word sustain means really to, to hold you up or to uphold you. And that's what he promises to do. And in the difficult times when the burdens press upon you, when you feel the weight of the cares that are in your life, it's lovely that the promise of God is that he will sustain you. He will hold you up. And the word that's there really means to support, to help, to strengthen, to enable, to endure. And God does all of those things, doesn't he? Promises to support, to help, to strengthen, to enable you to endure. There is help from God for you. There is enabling from God for you. There is power from God. He'll sustain you. That's the first lovely promise. And here's the other lovely promise. It says he will never let the righteous fall. The righteous are those who stand right in God's sight, whom he declares to be right, whose sins are forgiven and who are entrusting in Christ for salvation. The idea, says C.H. Spurgeon, is of a tree. And if you can imagine a tree and the, the storm blowing and uh, the, the branches of the tree being tossed around in the storm, but the tree's not moved because of the roots that are there. And this lovely promise is that God will never let the righteous be moved. He never let the righteous fall. I'd come home one Friday afternoon from, from teaching in school, went out to the garden and to do a bit of work on one of the hedges, and I had a pair of steps, a pair of wooden steps, and got got those out, put them up against one of the hedges and was going to do some work. And the steps just weren't quite high enough. So I stood on the, 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 the part of the steps where you put the paint pot only to discover that uh, the woodworm had got at the steps. And down I went and down the steps went as well. Couldn't trust those steps. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have been on them that day. Didn't do too much damage apart from a few uh, bruises that uh, were the outcome of that. Never trusted those steps again. But there is a God you can trust, a God who will come alongside to help you, to support you, to sustain you when the, you carry heavy burdens. A God who will not allow you to fall, not allow you to be moved. And what does the psalmist say in this? He says, as for me, I trust in you. Can you trust him? I couldn't trust those steps, wouldn't trust them again. Can you trust God? The answer is, the psalmist says, yes, I, I'm trusting him. And so can you, so can I. As for me, I trust in you. So here this morning, we've looked together at the cares David carries, the rest David longs for, the casting David does, and the God David trusts. William Hughes in 1904 found himself working in one of the Glamorgan pits. He attended uh, a Christian meeting and he was working on a lonely section of the coal face just shortly after that. And he entered a manhole. A manhole is a, a miner's place of refuge when the, the trucks, the coal trucks pass by and the, the miners co can go in there. 
and he felt as if the air was thick from his own curses of bygone days, but he prayed for God's mercy and forgiveness. And he felt that day as if a burden was lifted from him, borne on slow, strong winds through the roof of the mine and away forever, because he had come to the Lord Jesus Christ and he found forgiveness at the cross. And he says, tears came and songs came and joy came. His burden was lifted and your burden of sin and my burden of sin can be lifted too when we come to the cross and see one dying in our place. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. So there's great encouragement this morning for us from Psalm 55 and David's experience. So whatever burdens you're carrying, whatever impacts your mind and your heart, cast your burden upon the Lord and He'll sustain and support and help and enable you to endure and He'll hold you up and He'll not let you fall. He'll not let your feet be moved. May all of us say with David, when the burdens are heavy and the weights are difficult, May we say with David, as for me, I trust in you. We're going to pray and then listen to our final song. When I fear my faith will fail, he will hold me fast. Thank you for joining with us today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these lovely verses of Scripture that remind us that we can cast our cares upon you and you'll sustain and support and help and enable us to keep going when the going is tough, and you'll never let us be moved. Thank you for the great God that you are, and that you never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we pray in Jesus' great and powerful name. Amen.